Hey, here's another video from WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. Today what we're working on is a repair job for a friend's uh, exhaust component. I believe this is off a of Honda. It's uh, stainless steel tubing, but we got this carbon steel MIG weld on here that was done on the collector, and that's why it cracked. Also, I'm sure it was in a bind and had, you know, heating and cooling and heating and cooling and then having all that metallurgical stuff going on with stainless steel welded with mild steel MIG wire, you're going to have problems. So you can see it cracked right on the toe of the weld there and then just propagate it all the way around and I'm going to, I'm going to fix it. Now it's not worth grinding that big weld out for what it is because it's really you really couldn't get it all out. You have to cut it all the way out and add a piece in there and that's really overkill for, for what we're doing here. So uh, I'm going to TIG weld it and uh, I'm going to show you how I do it. Now this thing has got some interesting things going on. Not unusual, but the bung here is uh, really highly magnetic and the flanges are highly magnetic and they look like they've been plated, which makes me think they're probably just carbon steel that have been plated to kind of give the appearance of stainless steel. And this, the weld there is also very strongly magnetic because it was obviously done with just a MIG gun and, and everything else is 300 series stainless because it's not magnetic at all. If it was 400 series it would be it would be fairly magnetic as well. So I'm going to clean it up first. That's the first thing. I've got I bought this uh, Black & Decker straight grinder, electric straight grinder, years ago, and it's a hoss. It's been a good one. And I've got a wire cup brush on the end, and uh, when I hit the RPMs up uh, here, it'll fan out, and that's what I'm going to try to clean the inside with. I'm going to get rid of as much carbon as I can off the inside. And so it just fits up in there, and uh, I'm even going to mark it with a piece of tape so I'll know that I'm pretty much on track and uh, cleaning the inside where I need to be cleaning it. So I just threw a little piece of tape on here to let me know where I'm at so I won't be guessing too much. And you can see that wire wheel fan out again. Now you got to wear eye protection and face shield when you're using wire wheels like this at high RPMs and, uh, and I did. And then I'm going to clean the outside with a little abrasive cartridge here also known as a Tootsie Roll and uh, that, that'll get in little nooks and crannies and it's just a good way to remove uh, the scale without removing too much thickness of metal. So I got it pretty good and clean, good quarter inch away from where, uh, where the weld metal is going to be. Next thing to do is tape the ends, get ready for a purge. So I taped the, uh, the end here. I set it up so that there is a top, uh, the vent was all the way at the top. Argon's like water. It's heavier than air. It'll fill up just like water. And I used uh, aluminum like HVAC tape. That works good for putting it end on a purge and I, could little, I made a little crisscrosses in each one for vent holes because that way it's not much of a vent hole there but when you get the weld closed up it allows it to open up and uh, if you've ever welded something and forgot to put a vent hole in it you know that it, it probably pooched out on you at the end when you got everything sealed up and pressure built up. Now this end I'm just using regular old duct tape because it seals good. I wrap it around the hose first. Here's my dog. I didn't even notice that. Went through there. Oh well I don't have time to edit that out. I wrap a tape around the, the purge hose and make it kind of tapered and then I cut a hole in there and then I can pull it back out and it makes a pretty good seal because it's got a little a bulge on the tape and then I'll, I'll just touch up taping and everything there. And then I'll, I'll uh, uh, turn the purge on for a few minutes. Now I've, I just use vacuum hose line here for my purge. I got a barb fitting coming out of my dual, regular, uh, dual flow meter regulator and uh, just regular old like a quarter inch vacuum hose. I know it's probably not right for doing stringent applications like titanium, but it works great for most things. All right, and I'm going to use my little strong hand Nomad portable table here and the clamp with a little V-pad on it and just suck it down and get that gap out of there and then I'm going to get tack. I had a good tack weld on, uh, on that thing so it'll hold together so uh, I can weld it. I'm using a big, big 15 16 bell cup. I've tried to get some of these things made, and I still intend to, but I'm not having much luck. Now, this looks like I'm pulsing slow here. It's actually about 50 pulses a second, but the camera's, for some reason, is uh, the setting on the camera really shows it down. All right, here we go. Let's change the setting on the camera and weld into that tack now. I'm really not trying to penetrate really a whole lot. I don't want to drag all that stuff from the back side in. Not a lot of it. I am penetrating, but that's really I'm not really wanting to. I'm really just trying to put a good, decent bead on there with some reinforcement. Then I turn it over and probably a good idea to stop drill the ends of a crack, but I just hit them with a good hot weld and added several drops 
to keep that crack from moving. And then I'm ready to just uh, sew it up. So again, I'm using 50 pulses a second here, uh, roughly, with about 50% 50, 50 on time. That's the peak, the time that the peak of the pulse stays on, and about 40% background current, so that it drops down to about 40% of the, of the peak current on, during, during the pulse cycle, whatever that means. So this could easily be done without pulse, but I just thought, you know what, I don't really want I don't really want to put a lot of heat in here, so I also kind of want to agitate the puddle a little bit and uh, float some of that crud up to the top. And uh, it worked. It worked. It worked just just fine. I, I kind of suspect that it would have worked okay without pulse. You you can see some funk occasionally, some crud floating up, but uh, it, it welded pretty clean, especially with the uh, the 15 16 uh, big cup with about 35 CFH argon going on it that helped keep the puddle clean as well. So I'm just welded it in steps, just begging it forward and adding a little rod, begging it forward, pause and adding a little rod. Like you see some of the crud there, just, I'm just kind of welding over top of it and adding some rod to clean, clean the metal up because there's not much I can do about the crud that's in the crack. Taper off nice and slow so I don't leave any pinholes and uh, fish eyes. Just step by step. I'm using like a back step thing. I'll weld about an inch, and then I'll back up and weld about an inch to where I just welded. And now I'm shaking. I, I think I'm in a little bit of a bind. All right, just about done, except I notice there's a crack opened up on this side, too. So I'm going to have to clean, get the Tootsie Roll out, clean that again. The rest of it went pretty well. It's not going to look good with that big nasty MIG weld right next to it, but you know it's it'll it'll be okay. I use 309 filler wire. 309 is designed to uh, weld carbon steel to 300 series stainless steel. It's done all the time, and since I have a carbon steel weld there and 300 series stainless tubing, it seemed like the thing to do. Also, could have used 312. Is 312s are really good all-purpose rod for when you just don't really know what you got. In this case, I kind of don't know because even though that was a carbon steel MIG weld, it wasn't exactly carbon steel. It was stainless mixed in with it. But 309 did well. It didn't. It didn't try to crack back on me at all. So just touching up that last crack, and then that's it. Wrapping it up. That's the finished uh, product. You can see pretty good workmanship previously on the the welds that uh, when they fabricated this thing, except for that one. MIG weld on the uh, collector. All right, so here's a summary. Make sure to clean the metal to shiny bright. Don't just polish it over. I set the argon at 15 CFH. Use 309 TIG wire and an oversized uh, cup with a gas lens at about 35 CFH. 1 16th, 2% lanthanated, 50 pulses a second. You can pause the video or replay it or you go to my website and uh, read the text if you want to see uh, some more details.